Hey guys, for calculus, this is from 2.3, and from pre-cal, this is from 2.4. Uh, we are going to go over the product and quotient rule today. We're also going to start seeing when we do higher order derivatives, and all that means is that you're just going to do the derivative again. So when, if you do the derivative twice, if you want the second derivative, once you get the answer of the first one, you just do the process one more time, okay? So the first rule we're going to look at is called the product rule. It's called the product rule because um, they'll give you a function. They won't tell you to do the product rule. They'll give you a function. They'll ask you to do the derivative, but the function that they're giving you has two different functions being multiplied to each other. Okay? And the rule for that is pretty simple, and that is um, the first times the derivative of the second plus then you switch the who gets the derivative. The derivative of the first times the second, okay? So when I say the first and the second without a prime, that's just literally rewriting what was there, okay? The prime means you do the derivative of what was there, okay? So first times derivative of second plus derivative of first times second. Now, because multiplication and um, addition are commutative, Remember, commutative means that you can change the order and it won't affect your answer. So, for example, 2 plus 3 and 3 plus 2, I'm saying it backwards, but they'll both give you 5. Same thing with multiplication. 2 times 3 and 3 times 2, if I switch the order, will still give you 6. So, being that addition and multiplication are commutative, if I were to, for example, flip these two, these two or flip both sides of the addition, it won't affect your answer. So some people like to do the derivative to the g first, some people like to do the derivative to the f first, as long as on each side, the opposite one gets the derivative. So here, the g got the derivative and the f was the original, and here the f got the derivative and the g was the original, okay? In textbooks, you could see this um, being done as u times v, and then you'll see u times v prime plus u prime times v. They'll just use different symbols, okay? That's why I wrote down the wording for you. So let's take a look at this first example. So let's say we call this first one right here. Let's call this one F. And let's call this one G. If they want the first derivative, then I'm going to, I'm just going to rewrite this for now until you get the hang of it. Once you get a hang of it, you don't have to write this whole step out. Okay, let's scroll up a little bit. So F just means to rewrite this. G prime means I want to do the derivative of this. So remember, they're separated by addition, so I'm going to do one at a time. The derivative of X cubed is 3X squared. And then plus the derivative of 3, it's a constant, is just 0, so I don't need that part. Okay, bring down my plus. Now it says to do f prime, so the derivative of f, okay? Derivative of x squared is 2x plus derivative of 1 is 0, so I don't need to write that part. Times, and then I'm just going to rewrite g. Okay, you are technically done with the calculus, okay? So I always teach my AP students that when you're on a free response question uh, on the AP test, you could technically stop here because once you are done with the calculus, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division is not needed. Now we obviously practice finishing it because in the multiple choice section, you do need to be able to clean it all the way, okay? So the way I'm going to clean here, I just need to follow PEMDAS. I'm going to distribute. Okay. And then I'm going to combine like terms. Okay. So I have an exponent of 4 here and here. So I'm going to say this is 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 6x, okay? And that would be my final answer. 
Now, if, I'm going to teach you this as we go because it really is a simple concept. If they ask you for the second derivative or the third derivative or so on, okay, let's say I ask for the second derivative, I'm just going to put two of those little prime symbols to represent the second derivative. And all I would do is do the derivative to this answer, which, thank God there's no product rule here. We, wouldn't, we don't have to do this all over again. These are just three terms separated by addition, so I can solve each of them with power rule one at a time. So the derivative here, 4 times 5 is 20x to the subtract 1 third plus multiply that 2 to the front. I have 6x to the first plus 6. And this would be the answer if I were to ask for the second derivative. Mind you, I could do this again and again. I could even ask for the third derivative. I just put three primes. And I just do the power rule one more time. Three times 20. Subtract one. Derivative of six x is six. Derivative of a constant is zero. I'd be done. Every time you do your derivative, your highest exponent should go down one, okay? And that's just an idea of what it would look like if we kept doing the derivative on and on. Let's check out a few more examples. All right, let's take a look at this one. It says f of x equals 3x minus 2x squared times 5 plus 4x. Now, I'm going to suggest that you try pausing this video uh, and doing this one on your own and then playing it to see if you're able to do it, okay? All right, let's take a look. If I want you to do the first derivative, again, you don't have to do this labeling every time. Once you get the hang of it, you can skip this part. So f prime of x would be the first times derivative of the second plus derivative of the first times the second, okay? So I'm going to rewrite f. times g, I need to do the derivative here, derivative of 5 is 0, plus derivative of 4x is just 4. f prime, derivative of 3x is 3, minus derivative of 2x squared is 4x. And then for g, I need to just rewrite 5 plus 4x, okay? So now, next step, we're done with the calculus. Next step, we're going to have to distribute this 4. And over here, we're going to have to FOIL. Okay? So let's do that part next. So over here, we're doing first 3 times 5. 3 times 4x, now negative 4 times, excuse me, negative 4x times 5, and negative 4x times positive 4x. Okay, now it's just time to combine like terms. So I have, let's get a different color, a negative 8x squared and a negative 16x squared, which gives me negative 24x squared. Then I have a positive 12x squared, positive 12x squared, and a negative, I'm sorry, not squared, positive 12x and a negative 20x. So that gives me a positive 4 X. And then lastly, I have a positive 15. And that's my final answer. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Again, if you feel confident, I suggest you pause um, and try it on your own. So I know this is a product rule because I have a function 
times a function. And the, the reason why I call it a function is because it has a variable in it, okay? If I would have said three times 4x minus three, this would not be product rule because three wouldn't be a function. It, does, it doesn't have a variable. If you solved it with product rule, you would not get it wrong. It would just be a lengthy process when you could do it much quicker, okay? So let's call this F and let's call this G. Okay, so rewrite F, derivative of G, it's just 4, because the derivative of 3 is 0. Derivative of F, and then rewrite G. Okay, I'm going to multiply these two together, distribute this one, because there's two terms on the right side. And now I have 4x squared plus 8x squared minus 6x. And I can combine these two and say 12x squared minus 6x. Okay? All right, so this next portion, if you are in pre-cal, do not worry about it. Feel free to fast forward through this explanation and the upcoming example. Um, this is more for my calculus class. Pre-cal, you'll learn this next year. And pre-cal, you have not learned trig rules yet. You'll learn that in your next video, in your next section. Um, so again, feel free to fast forward. If the product rule is being asked to be done, so the derivative, of something that's being multiplied, but there are more than two factors. I just want to show you how the product rule keeps working. If you see it more as a concept, you can understand the product rule for an infinite amount of factors, okay? So the product rule we had said um, to do the derivative of each of them one time every time there's a plus sign. So, for example, the first time I'd do a term, I'd say, all right, let's give the derivative to the first one and rewrite each of the other one's originals. Plus, now I'm gonna give the prime to G and write the originals of the others. Okay. So notice the first time I gave F the prime and wrote the originals. The second time I gave G prime and wrote the originals. I hope you can understand what's gonna happen on the third one. I'm gonna give H the prime and write the originals of the other two. Okay. So again, it's just concept. It's the fact that um, you are going to write all three terms every time you write a plus sign. You're just going to take turns giving the prime to each of them, okay? So again, this is for Cal only because this next example does have trig functions. All right, so let's check this out. I do have three different terms. So this is like my F. This is like my G. And this is like my H, okay? So that means the first time, I'm going to follow this that I wrote up here. The first time, I'm only going to do the derivative of F and rewrite these two. So the derivative of F would be 2x, and then I'm going to rewrite these two. Again, if you are in pre-cal, you will learn the derivative of the six trig functions next video, so feel free to skip this one, okay? I'm going to write a plus sign, and now I'm going to write the originals of f and h, but do the derivative of g. So I'm going to write x squared, okay? The derivative of sine is cosine, and then I'm going to rewrite h, which is also a cosine. And for the last one, I'm going to write the originals of the first two and only do the derivative of h. And the derivative of cosine is 
a negative sign. Okay, so there I am done with the derivative. I'm just going to clean now. Um, just so you guys see, the ones with the parentheses are the ones that I did the derivatives of, okay? So now on this first term, there isn't anything I can combine. On the second one, I have two cosines. So I'm going to say 2x sine x cosine x plus x squared. I can call this a cosine squared. I'm going to move this negative to the front and say minus an x squared. And then the two signs I could say sine squared of x. All right. And that would be my final answer. All right, guys, our next rule is the quotient rule. So quotient rule is when they ask you to do the derivative of a function. And um, that function contains two different functions being divided. Okay. So you're going to do the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom over the denominator's function squared. Okay. Now, even though this is squared and it's usually going to be um, something big that you want to distribute, this is good news, guys. Do not clean the denominator. Okay. You do not have to. The AP test doesn't require you to. The back of the book has it without being clean. So it's one less step for you to do. All right. Now, I once had a, a teacher teach me this jingle, and I've always found it to be the easiest way to memorize the quotient rule. Low stands for the low, the denominator. High, the top part, stands for the numerator. Okay. D stands for derivative. So check it out. Low, D high minus, I switch fingers, high, the numerator, times d low, derivative of denominator, over low squared. Okay? So you'll hear kids in class sometimes just say low d high, high d low. And that's how they remember the order of the numerator. And the reason why the order of the numerator is so important is because unlike product rule, we have division and subtraction, okay, in our quotient rule. Division and subtraction are not commutative, meaning I cannot change the order because it will affect my answer. So unlike in product rule, here, order, making sure you memorize that jingle, low D high minus high D low is very, very important, okay? Let's check out this first example. If I want to do the derivative here, I'm going to say low, I'm just going to rewrite the denominator times d high, I'm going to do the derivative of the numerator. So derivative of 5x is just 5. Derivative of 2 is 0. Okay. Minus high, I'm going to write the numerator, times d low. So the derivative of the denominator is going to be 2x, and then derivative of 1 is 0, so I don't need that part. And then over low, so my low is x squared plus 1 squared, okay? This denominator is never going to have to be cleaned, okay? So don't stress it. Now, let me show you. We're done with the calculus. We did the derivative. But the next part is where the biggest mistakes happen in every year in AP tests, like just across the country, okay? Okay. I need to distribute this 5. That's going to be easy. Not too much room for error there. Here, not only do I have to distribute this 2x, but here's where the biggest mistake comes. I have to distribute this negative as well. Okay? So if you feel more confident doing one at a time, like just distribute the negative first and then distribute the 2x or vice versa, feel free to do so. If you feel confident enough to multiply a negative and a 2x to both of them, you can do that in one step, okay? The first question, I'm going to do it one at a time, and then the second question, I'll do them at the same time, okay? So 5 times 2, uh, excuse me, x squared plus 1, I have 5x squared plus 5 minus, I'm going to leave my parentheses and just multiply the 2x right now. Uh, 
And my denominator is going to look the same the entire way through. Okay? So I didn't distribute that negative there. I'm doing it one at a time this time. Okay? I'm going to come over here. telling you guys make a side note because this mistake happens so often okay and then lastly I'm just gonna combine like terms so I have a 5x squared and a negative 10x squared so I have negative 5x squared plus the 4x plus the 5 over x squared plus 1 and you are done with this question. All right, I'm going to encourage you again to pause the video, try this one on your own, and then check in to see if you were able to. But let's get started on this one. We have low, I'm rewriting my denominator, times d high derivative of high of the numerator, which gives me 2x, that plus 1 disappears, so derivative 1 is 0, minus high d low, derivative of the bottom is just a 2 over low squared. Okay, I'm going to do my distributing. This time, I'm going to distribute the 2 and the negative 2 at the same time, okay? So, so here, I'm multiplying a negative and a 2. So, negative 2 times x squared gives me negative 2x squared, and negative 2 times 1 is just negative 2. Okay? All right, last step. Combine like terms. I have the 4x squared minus 2x squared There are no other terms to combine. All right, and that's your answer. All right, let's check out this next question. Um, I want to show you what happens when they try and throw you off. They're giving you a fraction within a fraction, okay? So you see that I have 1 over x as a first fraction here, and then this entire thing is a fraction. Here is your rule of thumb. There are many ways of doing this. Uh, the way that I have found is the quickest simplest way to clean this is, well, first of all, you're going to clean it before you do the derivative, okay? And I'm going to show you the way to clean it in one quick step. The way to clean this every single time is whatever that extra denominator is, okay? That is what you're going to multiply top and bottom, okay? And I'm going to show you why in a moment. The fact that I'm multiplying x over x, I'm technically multiplying my question by 1, which means I'm not changing its value, I'm, everything is legal, okay? So, the reason why I do this, this x needs to get distributed now. This is going to become 3x minus x over x over x squared plus 5x, okay? So, notice that by multiplying whatever was in this denominator, top and bottom, this is going to simplify to 1, and I'm no longer going to have a fraction within a fraction. So, I have 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 5x. This step can be done anytime you find yourself getting stuck with a fraction within a fraction, okay? 
So now, instead of doing the derivative to this function, I'm going to do the derivative to this function. Okay? So, y prime is low. d high, derivative of the top is just 3, minus high, d low, the derivative of the bottom is 2x plus 5 over low squared. Okay? Next, I have to clean. Remember, you are distributing that negative, and you need to FOIL, okay? So if you'd like, you can distribute the negative first and then FOIL. Make sure you only distribute the negative to this one. Um, or you can FOIL this inside first and then distribute the negative, which is what I'm going to do, okay? So first, outer inner and then last. Okay, now I'm going to distribute that negative. You could also combine like terms while you're at it. Just be careful that you don't skip any steps, okay? So I only have a 6x squared. I don't have any other squared, so I'm going to do a negative to the 6x squared. Now the x is I have a 15x and a negative 2x. If I combine these two, I get a 13x, okay? But then I have to give the positive 13x this negative. And then I only have the 5, so it would be a plus 5. Okay, so again, I, I combine these two first, and then I gave it the negative. I still have to combine one more time. Let's do it over here, leave me some room. I have a 3x squared and a negative 6x squared, so I end up with negative 3x squared. I end up here, 15x minus 13x with a positive 2x, and then that plus 5, there's no other constant to combine it with. So the denominator feels annoying because you just have to rewrite it, but don't stress, there's no cleaning you have to do there. All right, there's your answer. All right, last thing for today. Um, we started talking about higher order derivatives, and that just meant they can ask you to do the second derivative, and you just do it twice. The third derivative, you just do it three times, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, don't get freaked out. I don't think they'll ever ask you to do, like, the 20th derivative. Um, if they ever do, I think I've seen it once on an AP test, and it's just um, a trig function that ended up having a pattern because once you find out the pattern, you don't, you don't actually have to do the 20 derivatives, okay? So don't stress about doing that many derivatives. The norm is to do up to the second derivative, all right? So let me just show you what some of the notations look like. These are the four main notations you're gonna see throughout um, calculus honors, AP Cal, and so on. So we've been seeing the y prime. So first derivative, second derivative, third. We've been doing an extra tally after third, just so it doesn't look like a crazy amount of tallies, we put the little number in parentheses like if it was an exponent. Nth derivative means like I could fill in any number for n, so if I want the seventh derivative, it'd be y with a little seven in the exponent in parentheses, okay? Same thing if instead of saying y, they say f of x, okay? So f prime, we use the primes up until the third, and then we use the number in parentheses after that, okay? We had said that derivative 
is a fancy way of saying slope of a curve. Um, and we said slope is the change in y over the change in x. Okay, so dy dx, we've talked about this notation. These two are very similar. The difference between these two is one uses y and one uses f of x, but they are the same all the way down. Okay, they just pull the y to the front and they call it f of x. Okay, so the first derivative, you don't need to put a little number one there. dy dx already implies the change. Okay, then the second derivative, um, the numerator has it after the d. The denominator has it after the x, okay? Third derivative, after the d, and then denominator after the x. Fourth, numerator after the d, denominator after the x, and all the way down to the nth derivative, okay? So again, that's just some notations that you might be seeing. Um, and then stay tuned for the next video where we will be talking about the trig derivatives.